Hello, you wonderful people. Today, we're going to continue our Astro Crash Course. If you haven't seen previous videos, you could, of course, find them here on YouTube, but you could also find them on my website, Coding After 30. All the courses that I make free, including all the notes, are located on this website. You don't need an account, although you do need to click to sign up. You don't need to create your account. You could just click the sign in button and use this dummy account. Going to all courses, you're going to see all the courses that I'm currently working on. And today we're going to continue our Astro Crash Course. You could check out the course by clicking View Course. And if you haven't seen the first videos one through four, make sure you go ahead and do them. But we're going to continue from where we were working on our mobile menu, making it work in our Astro application. Today we're going to expand a little bit farther. And I already created the class notes here that you could find on this website of what we're going to do and i'm actually recording the video so you could watch it as well but today we're going to take a look how we could create a Azure component that both can be used for a top navigation when it's in desktop mode and it's the same component that is used for our drop down navigation and notice that the styling is a little bit different here we have a green highlight and when we are back in desktop mode notice that it's great highlight and the style is a little bit different so let's jump into the video and see how we could accomplish this. I already opened up my project in VS Code. And if you take a look, I'm located inside pages inside the index.astro file. Our main layout, our wrapper component, is where our top navigation lives. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly navigate there. Notice that already here, we created our top navigation component. This is where all of our logic for our top and mobile navigation lives. So let's go inside this component and take a look what's going on. And here you will see all of our HTML that builds this component. There's a lot of things that we could move out to make this component leaner. For instance, our anchor tag here with an SVG, this SVG could be its own separate icon, but we'll handle that in a different video. In this video, what I wanna talk about is notice that we have our mobile menu that has an anchor link with name about and then it has another link with the link blog and if we scroll down we're going to notice that we have another navigation and this is our desktop navigation where we're kind of repeating ourselves by again hard coding our link and for our home page and for our about why don't we create a reusable component that we could both use in our desktop navigation and our mobile navigation and just give it different stylings based on the props so let's go ahead and do that now. Inside the components folder, we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it nav item. And go ahead, we're going to first start by defining our front matter. And let's define an interface for our typing. We're going to say interface props and we're going to have an href for our URL, which is going to be a string, our label, which is going to be a string and a Boolean for our mobile saying, hey, is this a mobile item or is this a desktop item? So this looks good to me. We also want to define a path name, which you are able to get from astro.request.url. We're going to use this to determine which nav item is active. And if you're wondering how I am getting these autocompletes, because I already went through this project and created this tutorial and have my notes on this project. We're going to say that is active is the current path. And that's what we could use to tell our styling, hey, do something because this link is active. We're also going to have is a mobile flag, which is going to go ahead and tell us if we want to show our mobile nav item styling or our nav item styling. Next, I'm going to post our HTML for our component. Using class list in Astro allows us to pass multiple items. So is mobile is responsible for our class names that we're going to use. Is it a mobile nav item or a regular nav item? And of course, we're going to have an addition active class to do some additional styling. Finally, I'm going to define the styles for our navigation. So if we pass the mobile prop, it is going to go ahead and use these styles. But if the prop is not passed, it's going to use the nav item styles. And our active class is responsible for displaying our text gray 900 color. Now that we have our component, we are actually able to use it. So let's go ahead and do that now. So inside our top nav astro component, 
first thing we're going to do is import our new component that we created. I'm going to say import nav items from nav item astro. Now that we imported our nav items, let's go ahead and use them. We're going to start here in our desktop menu. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the lie with the old anchor tag. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and add our nav item for home, add it for about and for our blog. And now I'm going to go ahead and delete all the unnecessary duplicates since we're now using our Astro component. Taking a look at the app, our top navigation items still work as expected. So now let's go ahead and add our mobile menu items. Scrolling to the bottom, we're going to get to our mobile menu and I'm going to pass our nav item component that we created, but I'm going to tag it with a mobile prop, which says, hey, use the mobile styles. And I'm going to do the same thing for about and our block section. So now we could safely delete all of our older code that we were using. Nice. So now we have our mobile menu using our mobile nav items and our desktop menu using that same component. But because it doesn't have the mobile prop, it's going to display it in its desktop styling. As you could see here, our desktop styling looks different than our mobile styling, which is pretty awesome. So before we make these nav items dynamic, quick recap here in our nav item Astro component, we created a component that's a little bit more flexible than what did, than what we did before, because it's reusable and we could use it in multiple places. And even though we did a very simple example where we're using the mobile prop to say, Hey, this should be a mobile menu, or it should be a desktop menu. This shows how in Astro via props, you could style things differently based on showing different CSS classes based on the prop provided. Finally, back in our top navigation code, notice how we are still repeating our components. We have to manually save one for home about blog post. And we're also doing the same thing here. That's kind of not cool. So scrolling back to the top here in my front matter, in our front matter, I'm going to go ahead and paste a const to hold my item, which is our nav items for our home, our about and blog. Now what we're able to do instead of repeating each item like so, we are able to map through our nav items and dynamically set them based on the data that we have above. So let's go ahead and fix this in our mobile menu here. So I'm going to delete all this unnecessary code and we're going to say nav items map through our items, use the nav item component. And again, to define this as our mobile item, we're adding our mobile prop. So if we refresh, we are able to see the same menu. It works the same way for our desktop view with a desktop styling. And more importantly, if I want to add another navigation item, for instance, contacts, I'm able to do it in one place. And if we take a look at our code, notice that we have our new contact navigation item. Not only does it appear on our desktop, but also appears in our mobile nav menu. Now that we have our desktop and mobile navigation dynamically being populated from our nav items data that we defined in the top of our front matter, in our next video, we're going to take a look how we could load that data from an external API. Now, Astro has many ways of loading data. We're going to start with the most simplest one, which is what we actually did here, which is just hard code your data in your application. Now that's not as flexible as we could make it. So in the next video, we're going to take a look how we could fetch the data here instead from an endpoint that's going to populate our navigation. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, you could let me know in the comments below, but I'm going to continue to teach you what I'm learning while building this Astro project. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next one.